a mission trip, the way I used to view it, is just going and helping people. It's so much more than that. There was a buildup for me wanting to go to Costa Rica because my, my late husband and my son RJ had um, gone there in 2005. And a year later I lost my husband. The impression on my heart was that I wanted to go on a mission trip and it just wasn't available to me because being a single mom, I wasn't able to get away from my daughter. And when she was able to um, consider going on the St. Croix mission trip last summer, I wasn't sure that we could do it. Again, being a single mom, my income doesn't warrant for a lot of extra things. And I remember sitting in the meeting um, when they were presenting all of the details about the trip for the youth. And after the meeting was over, all the youth sponsors were around us and they all started talking about the reasons why the kids should go. Karen Malkowski spoke up and I felt like she was speaking directly to me and she basically said, if money is what is holding you back from considering doing a mission trip, don't allow that to be the case because God will provide. I took that and I decided that I was going to trust God and I signed my daughter up and the funds did come in. Scott Bondi came to me one Sunday and asked me, so are you ready? And I said, for what? And he said, I've got a trip to Costa Rica planned for January. And this was like September. I said, okay, let's do it. Being able to walk the streets that my husband and my son did um, was very healing for me. And um, the trip itself, just going to a, a different country, that um, I experienced what my son and my husband experienced and they tried to explain to me but I couldn't understand when they came back from their trip. It was um, very impactful to meet the people of, in this country. I fell in love with these people and I fell in love with the country. Um, my son had made the comment when he came home that the thing that made the biggest impact on him was these people have nothing and they're the happiest people he's ever met. And that rang true for me as well. We had served at a school um, or a home for disabled children. And um, I was very nervous going in, but God just gave me peace. I was able to feed a young girl that was in a wheelchair it was very difficult to start with, but as I was feeding her, um, God just gave me peace and I was able to sing to her and she was able, she smiled and um, just kind of embraced the time that I had with her. And I was blessed to go back the next day and again feed her. That was very impactful because I went into this home not realizing the um, the work that these nuns do for these kids, and they do it 24-7. Um, and it, it was a huge blessing for me to be a part of that. I had a son that had disabilities, and I understand, but that just brought me to a deeper understanding about how we, as a society, as people in general, need to just embrace all of God's children and to love them and to care for them and take care of them as he would want us to. The roof that the guys had um, put on for the older lady and this woman was so incredibly grateful that we came and we were able to do all this work for her. And the last day that we were there she just had tears flowing. We all had tears flowing as she was thanking us. You know, it, it's God that did this for her. It's We were the servants that came and the hands that did the work, but it truly was God that did this for her. The church that we went to serve, him and his family, um, just wonderful people. The second day that we were there, we were able to t attend their church service. And being an outsider and attending the service 
I couldn't understand a word they were saying or singing, but I just got enveloped by all of the people and their worship and how they were just asking for God to be a part of their service. And you, you just, you became enveloped by their praise. And it, it was a, a very um, life-changing experience for me. I think one of the most fulfilling parts of the trip for me was when Dave walked me up to the first cross. For those of you that don't know, there's three crosses in Costa Rica that you can walk up to, and when you walk up to them, you're walking up mountains, literally. And we walked up to the first cross and um, was able to spend some time there. And Dave, it was important to him to do that with me um, because the day that my husband passed away, Dave was up at the cross praying for him. So it just um, meant so much to have them there with me to experience that. Um, so this trip not only was life changing for me, but it was extremely healing in a lot of personal ways. Um, it's kind of brought me full circle and I'm grateful for that because I think God has finally gotten me to the point that my heart is healing and I'm moving forward and I'm able to really focus on my life and what God has for me and my daughter's life right now. I've learned that there's so much more out there than my little space here in the United States and we are so very blessed here in this country and until you experience some, the poverty that there is in other countries I don't think people will understand that's why I encourage any of you anybody that is even considering doing a mission trip do everything you can to take part in a mission trip so that you can experience the world outside of what we have here in the United States. My name is Tracy Spear and here's my short testimony about my mission trip to Costa Rica.